The Israeli military said Sunday it destroyed underground infrastructure during its operation in southern Lebanon. The army said in a statement that, in targeted raids and ground operations in southern Lebanon, the division's forces have eliminated over 100 terrorists and located and destroyed dozens of tunnel shafts and terrorist infrastructure. Israel has been escalating its campaign against Hezbollah with waves of heavy airstrikes across Lebanon and a ground invasion at the border after a year of exchanges of fire. Israel is now at war with Hamas in Gaza and Hamas ally Hezbollah in Lebanon. <laughs> Russia has been previously supplying drones to Hezbollah and training the group's operators, as reported by Israel's news outlet KAN, citing Lebanese sources. Additionally, Russia is reportedly negotiating with Houthi rebels to provide anti-ship missiles. This transfer of drones and the training allegedly comes from sources cited by Lebanese newspaper al Nahar backed by intelligence reports. The Russian Foreign Ministry asserts that Hezbollah still maintains structure and control amid Israel's operation in Lebanon, as stated by Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova. According to the Middle East Institute report, written by Samuel Ramani, an associate fellow at the Royal United Services Institute in London, Russia's dismay at the escalating tension is rooted in the Kremlin's relations with Hezbollah. Primarily, they support each other's use of illicit funding networks to evade economic sanctions and, in parallel, to strengthen their position on Lebanese territory. As cooperation in Syria deepens, the Kremlin sees close ties with Hezbollah as the basis for its influence in Lebanon. Russia and Hezbollah's common pro-Assad stance in the Syrian civil war laid the groundwork for multi-level cooperation. Since the two began diplomatic relations in 2015 following Russia's military intervention in the conflict between Syria and the militias of the terrorist group Hezbollah with the motive of supporting and sustaining Syria's remaining president Bashar al-Assad, cooperation between the two has been very high. The presence in the delegation of Hezbollah's financial advisor Hassan Makled in Moscow, who was later sanctioned by the US government and subsequent meetings with Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bogdanov, provided the basis for possible business deals, such as the $1.5 billion deal with Russia's hydroelectric engineering and construction company to rebuild the Zarani refinery in southern Lebanon. Almost Ten years later, relations between the terrorists and Moscow have deepened, especially in the economic and financial sphere. In addition to the drone transfers, there have been reports that Russia is engaged in negotiations with Yemeni Houthi rebels to transfer anti-ship missiles brokered by Iran. These contacts allegedly date back to the presidency of former Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, who perished in a plane crash in late May of this year. Russian officials have reportedly held at least two meetings with Houthi representatives in Tehran over the past year to discuss the details of the deal, with further meetings expected soon. No final decision has been made by Russia on whether to proceed with the missile handover, particularly the P-800 missiles, with a range of 300 kilometers. Experts warn these missiles could heighten threats to commercial shipping in the Red Sea and escalate risks for American and European naval vessels. A locomotive crashed into a passenger train Sunday in southern Egypt, injuring at least 20 people, authorities said. It was the second train crash in a month in the Middle Eastern country. The crash occurred in the province of Minya, 270 kilometers south of Cairo, the railway authority said in a statement. It said the locomotive crashed with the tail of the Cairo-bound passenger train and that two railway carriages have fallen into an adjacent watercourse. The cause of the crash was being investigated, it said. 
Footage aired by local media showed two rail carriages partially submerged in the watercourse. The health ministry said in a separate statement at least 20 people were injured and taken to hospitals. Train derailments and crashes are common in Egypt, where an aging railway system has also been plagued by mismanagement. In September, two passenger trains collided in a Nile Delta city, killing at least three people. In recent years, the government announced initiatives to improve its railways. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi said in 2018 some 250 billion Egyptian pounds, or $8.13 billion, would be needed to properly overhaul the North African country's neglected rail network. أحد الأشخاص يمكن نلاحظ أن هناك توقف في حركة القطارات حاليا والقطار الآخر زي ما حضراتكم شايفين أدى إلى سقوط عربيتين في طرعة الإبراهيمية هنقرب الصورة لحضراتكم بحيث ايوه في عم لسه مطلع